Chapter 10 Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. He kissed Saul on the cheek and said, I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the leader of his people Israel. When you leave me today, you will see two men beside Rachel's tomb at Zelzah on the border of Benjamin. They will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that your father is worried about you and is asking, Have you seen my son? When you get to the Oak of Tabor, you will see three men coming toward you who are on their way to worship God at Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats, another will have three loaves of bread, and the third will be carrying a skin of wine. They will greet you and offer you two of the loaves which you are to accept. When you arrive at Gibeah of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the altar on the hill. They will be playing a harp, a tambourine, a flute, and a lyre, and they will be prophesying. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you with power, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed into a different person. After these signs take place, do whatever you think is best, for God will be with you. Then go down to Gilgal ahead of me, and wait for me there seven days. I will join you there to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. When I arrive, I will give you further instructions. As Saul turned and started to leave, God changed his heart, and all Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. When Saul and his servant arrived at Gibeah, they saw the prophets coming toward them. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy. When his friends heard about it, they exclaimed, What? Is Saul a prophet? How did the son of Kish become a prophet? But one of the neighbors responded, it doesn't matter who his father is. Anyone can become a prophet. So that is the origin of the saying, Is Saul a prophet? When Saul had finished prophesying, he climbed the hill to the altar. Where in the world have you been? Saul's uncle asked him. We went to look for the donkeys, Saul replied. But we couldn't find them, so we went to the prophet Samuel to ask him where they were. Oh, and what did he say? His uncle asked. He said the donkeys had been found, Saul replied. But Saul didn't tell his uncle that Samuel had anointed him to be king. Later, Samuel called all the people of Israel to meet before the Lord at Mizpah, and he gave them this message from the Lord, the God of Israel. I brought you from Egypt and rescued you from the Egyptians and from all of the nations that were oppressing you. But though I have done so much for you, you have rejected me and said, We want a king instead. Now, therefore... Present yourselves before the Lord by tribes and clans. So Samuel called the tribal leaders together before the Lord, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. Then he brought each family of the tribe of Benjamin before the Lord, and the family of the Matrites was chosen. And finally Saul, son of Kish, was chosen from among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. So they asked the Lord, Where is he? And the Lord replied, He is hiding among the baggage. So they found him and brought him out, and he stood head and shoulders above anyone else. Then Samuel said to all the people, This is the man the Lord has chosen as your king. No one in all Israel is his equal. And all the people shouted, Long live the king! Then Samuel told the people what the rights and duties of a king were. He wrote them down on a scroll and placed it before the Lord. Then Samuel sent the people home again. When Saul returned to his home at Gibeah, a band of men whose hearts God had touched became his constant companions. But there were some wicked men who complained, How can this man save us? And they despised him and refused to bring him gifts. But Saul ignored them.